on trial. Uh, joining me now, criminal law expert Lou Shapiro. Lou, thanks for being here. How strong is the government's case against Hunter Biden? Well, good to be back with you, Chris. Uh, that's a very good question. It's a tough case uh, when you have a defendant who wrote a book and admitted to actually uh, doing the conduct for which he is charged for. So I think the defense has quite an uphill battle. And the mode of attack I think they're going to be uh, using is was Biden himself really an addict at that moment when he purchased the gun, when he had the gun? In general terms, he might have been an addict during that time period. But perhaps there was those days, those 11 days or so of sobriety where there is a reasonable doubt as to whether he was an addict at the exact moment that he's being charged with. That's what we can expect to be the defense in this case. So how does Hunter Biden, he's pleading not guilty here, how does he defend himself? Like To your point, I mean, in the memoir, he talks about being addicted to crack cocaine at the time that he purchased this gun. So the presentation will sound something like many people, we all know family or friends or colleagues that know someone that has been going through addiction or has been fighting it and it is a lifelong battle. It's not something that just goes away like the flip of a switch. So when somebody says they are an addict, it doesn't mean they're necessarily using at that time or at that moment. It could be just that that is what they are facing in their life and they're doing their best to you know, take hold of that and deal with it. And that goes to jury selection, by the way, Chris. I think uh, they're going to be looking for jurors who probably have had some experiences uh, with people that have gone through drug addiction. They might be more compassionate to someone like Hunter Biden in this case. How often are cases related to this particular charge actually brought to trial? Almost never. Uh, to be fair, uh, this is a very unusual prosecution. Uh, that's why uh, the offer initially was to settle this for a quick misdemeanor uh, for one and done and everybody goes home at that point. Uh, but then the special prosecutor, Dave Weiss, took it over and now uh, Hunter Biden is facing a uh, felony federal charges, which are quite serious. I don't believe that if he is convicted, he will do any time on such a case because nobody got hurt. He was dealing with addiction at that time. Uh, so in light of those issues, there is a compassionate side uh, to sentencing, and I think that would be taken into account. But overall, it's a very unique case. The fact that it's the president's son is unprecedented, and uh, we'll see how this thing turns out. If Hunter Biden was not the president's son, would he be in a courtroom today? It, it, you know, for jury selection? No. no it, I don't think he would be here today. I think the reason why he was federally prosecuted uh, was because of uh, politics on both sides, uh, being Trump being prosecuted for, he's been prosecuted for, uh, and then the right was crying that Hunter Biden seems to be getting a pass, uh, that he's getting preferential treatment by his father. So therefore that put pressure on a special prosecutor, especially in light of the fact that we have an election just a few months away. So all that is being taken into account. Sadly, politics has definitely crept into our judicial system. And I know this is playing out. Obviously, last week we were talking about former President Donald Trump and those 34 uh, criminal charges in his hush money trial. And I remember going back to the jury selection then. And the question was, can a jury be impartial when Donald Trump is the former president? Uh, how much would you expect politics to come into play with this jury in a different situation, but one involving the president's son? It's inevitable, and it can cut both ways. There's going to be uh, panelists that are not going to want to have anything to do with this, not because of their political beliefs or views, but just because they don't want to be part of this whole thing. They're scared of maybe being threatened or being bullied or things of that nature. We're even hearing some of those complaints uh, resulting from the Trump jurors in the latest trial. And then there's going to be some maybe that, that want to be a part of this. They see this as something to be, uh, you know, to play a part in history for. Uh, so there might be jurors that are very eager to be participants in this. So it can run the gamut depending on their profile. Our criminal law expert, Lou Shapiro, thank you for taking the time to be with us. You got it, Chris. And as